Hi, hey, everyone. Hey. Welcome wow, to the patch. It looks so different. This week wow. brought to you by Dollar Shave Club and MeUndies. Our MeUndies. Our MeUndies. That's what I think every time. Uh, we're. I don't even have a, as an the hourglass kids say, to flip. No, nothing. We're <laughs> kicking it old school. Mm hmm. <laughs> as long as it's always said with kids that inflection. That. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> With, uh, we got the old set up today. We're doing the uh, Extra Life recruitment stream later tonight. That's what yeah. all this is, yes. So, uh, spoiler alert. Uh, so, uh, we we had to pull out the old shitty table. I was just looking at this table the other day. I was wondering why we hadn't gotten rid a nice of it. Table. What's wrong with it? Yeah, Solid why wouldn't we throw it away? This is the Mahogany. only use for this table. Well, and well, here it is. And here it is. <laughs> Being used. We're using it. So. What would we have been sitting at if we didn't have it? At my desk. Would you do it at your desk? You want to just no, sit around? Not. You think everybody in your office would have been really happy about, oh, we're going to shoot a podcast in here. Eh, who cares? <laughs> it's like a six foot high desk. <laughs> uh, I'm Gus. I'm Jeremy. I was taking a drink. I'm sorry. I'm Ryan. And I'm also Gus. Um, oh, so that's back. Yeah, that's back. I've it's never that. left. We, well, we weren't on the patch for a long time. That's no, why, that's why you missed it. Like last week? I did it last week. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Did you? <laughs> I, was, I, I always get distracted because I have to flip the, the, the hourglass. hourglass. Um, today's one of those. This is one of those great slow news weeks for mm -hmm. the patch, so we're just gonna sit around, talk. Yes, we're low about energy. Games, a lot of energy yeah, right now. How do you have low energy? I showed you amazing things on the Vive today. Oh, I got things so amazing. That thing's you incredible. Got drunk. I got okay, drunk. I did it. Right. I did it. Um, yeah, yeah. You showed, you showed me some really cool stuff. What was it? Fantastic contraption. Yep, that's it. Fantastic contraption. Wow, which I got is it right. like, Yeah, you nailed it. It's uh, it's sort of the best way I, I could kind of think to describe it is it's kind of like siege. Only instead of trying to blow up a base, you're trying to build a contraption to get a ball from one point to another. Well, that was a game for mm -hmm. Fantastic Contraption yes. was already. Oh, it's two D, right? And you just moved yes, it from one. Yes, I believe yeah. there was a two D version. So now you are in the contraption. Now yeah. you did. You have a, a very handy cat. That, your your uh, toolbox is a cat. Yeah, a flying <laughs> that robot that you pull cat. tools out of. Well, it's got like a big. It's got a little roller ball stuck in its back, and then it's got sticks that you can grab that you can stretch to different lengths, and then it's got. Oh, now uh, I can picture it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like yeah. a cat. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it gets in the way. Like you're building something. It like never a real, got like, in my way. Like a once. real cat. I'm like, how am I gonna do this? And the fucking cat gets in. Like kitty, no, <laughs> you just no. Get, and you, I'm like, get away. Cat. You summon the cat with the trigger, and you must have been tapping the trigger. That working. cat never got in my way. I was like doing stuff. Not once. The cat was all in my face, and then when it moves, it farts. It's got like little pink clouds because you know well, why it's not? just a locomotion technique it's got to move around it's not farts it's just air come on it's a robot pink puffs of air that come out of the ass are right, look, pink and it's directional okay it's moving forward it's just how space works uh but yeah it's, i guess it's uh it's it's, it's fun it's, it's actually really cool i mean these are all and this is also just a demo at this point i mean mm -hmm. anything that you're playing right now on the vive is just something that somebody's putting together for the future uh, and it's still just the amazing connection between I, I've never gotten in a game and gotten down on my knees while playing it and been happy that I was doing that. Yeah, it really makes you feel in that world. Like yeah. this, I, you had me playing Fruit Ninja at one mm -hmm. point, and uh, I couldn't tell my brain not to catch the fruit. Like if, if I <laughs> bumped the fruit with the sword, I'd get, try and get it with uh -huh. my other hand every time. Or if a melon came at me, I'd like. Panic. I really wish they would enable the second controller in that one because just having the sword is cool But I want to have a second sword right. or like uh, something I could bat things out of the way with like a gauntlet or uh, You want to go full Leonardo on yes, it? Yes, absolutely. I would I think I could <laughs> whip out some kind of fruit ninja-esque thing like Yeah, that's a video <laughs> slicing and dicing, you know, I'm thinking of like Raiden from uh, Metal Gear Rising. <laughs> yeah, revengeance uh, Man, uh, I, I had a lot of fun with that one. Then it was also like a What's the other one called? Job Simulator? Job Simulator. And apparently, <laughs> it's a job simulator only if you're a prep cook. I, I, oh, that's I, the chef one? Yeah. That's the chef oh, one. That's yeah. Job Simulator. <laughs> oh, all right. That makes sense. <laughs> Your job it's is a job. It is a job. Get pieces of tomato, slices of tomato out of a fridge. They have a job simulator for you. <laughs> Some... Times that needs to be simulated. What do you do? You think they were going to start with like heart surgery? Come on. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, hey. see? That was oh, a more, right, cool. That was great. That was great for that bit. That was a much more there elaborate version than what we got to play with. Yeah, this is this is that one looks cooler. This is not what we have, but it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> that, well, that, that was like in a cubicle. It looked like. Yeah, I think there's a, that may have been what we got to play with. May have been their first kind of like Vive test. Uh, like some of that may have been. It's a trailer for what? Office worker. Office worker. Uh, Ooh, that is also a job. job simulator. It's the next level in job yeah. simulator. I can't wait for the Vive version of Euro Truck Simulator. 
And you're just sitting there. You know there's already a Vive version terrifying. of your <laughs> driving on the left side of the road. You know, Oculus Rift is supported by your yeah, Simulator too. I want a Vive version. Okay, what's the difference other than higher resolution at this yeah, point? because the, the point of the Vive is you can walk around the and stuff. Oculus stop. sucks. <laughs> the truck, you're just sitting there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, was, it was fun. I had a lot of fun. Oculus out there doesn't suck. Uh, yeah, Oculus sucks. Um, the best- <laughs> The DK2 is not great. The- well, yeah, so I realized why I'm having a problem with Oculus. And it's- it's a really? stupid okay. reason, I, I acknowledge it. I told you this the other day. Mm -hmm. it's, it's- it's- it's so stupid you probably already forgot. So, I-, I like, I I'm felt like <laughs> there were problems with the DK2, like, something about the refresh rate and the resolution, like, it just makes me feel sick any time I put it on. And they have an updated version called Crescent Bay. Mm -hmm. And I realized I don't like it because it makes me think of Glacier Bay, which is like the shitty cheap faucets you buy at Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think of like frustration trying to install shitty faucets at home. And it's like, I don't like it. And then it ruins its right, all it's over. Like, yeah. Crescent Bay, nope. <laughs> can't get in the mood now. Yeah. I can't play games. <laughs> so that's, that's my problem with it right I now. I can't wait until like, something's named after like an Ikea furniture piece. You're like, ah, oh, it's too hard to put together. Fuck, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> can someone else do it? <laughs> Um, so what else was, oh, and I realized after, uh, so I, I played Java Simulator for a bit, and at one point I was trying to juggle some stuff, and I knew Jeff knows how to juggle, so I was like, hey Jeff, come over, see if you can juggle this. So I took the, the headset off, and I gave it to him, and I went over and stood by Ryan, and I was, you know, looking at the computer, then I wanted to go step over and look closer to Jeff, and even though I didn't have the headset on, I did this, I was like, trying to move the cords <laughs> to make sure they were behind me, I was like, oh no, wait, I'm not wearing Oh the yeah. Vibe. yeah. <laughs> The weirdest thing that I have kind of experienced as I, you know, do these demos with you guys is everybody's reaction to it is always like, oh God, I was so there. I was like, I'm such in the, the thing. I'm like, all right, well, it, it looks still cartoony. It's like, I don't feel like I'm right in the cartoon space. But I do kind of remember when I first started playing with the Oculus that I sort of got that sort of vibe and it sort of kind of faded. Like, I, I'm more cognizant, I think, of the digital nature of it, but it's really cool to watch people experience that. Yeah. I mean, and I guess... And flinch away from shit. What, like, sep what separated this one when I was watching, I think, Gus play Job Simulator, maybe it was Gavin, but, mm -hmm. uh, was he dropped something on the floor mm -hmm. and he could actually bend down and pick uh -huh. it up. Like, that's mm -hmm. something you couldn't do in another version of that game. If you dropped I, it on the floor, it's done. I dropped something at one point and I tried to catch it before it fell. <laughs> like, Which you could have done. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I missed it, but, you know, it's like, oh, I, I actually could have. Like, my reflex mm -hmm. in reality would have been, like, to reach out and try to catch it. And even in the game, it's like, oh, Oh, I missed it. Yeah, like imagine like Surgeon Simulator like mm -hmm. that. You know, you drop the heart, it's not over. You go pick that yeah. up, pick that up and put it back in. Actually, Surgeon Simulator, I think, has Oculus support. Um, mm -hmm. But what was actually, it was kind of really fun and interesting was that Gavin and I started playing around with Job Simulator, and I took one of the hands. And so he would start trying to throw things through a window, and I couldn't see what he was looking at because of the, I had the monitor turned away. But I was starting to try and block the things as he's throwing them through the window. And I was blocking them based on his motion in the real world. Mm. Like mm -hmm. I could tell where the throw was going to go based on just how he was throwing it digitally. So uh, the, the connection there between the real yeah. world and the digital was so intense. It's great. Yeah, Michael said that when he was watching me play Fruit Ninja mm -hmm. and I had the headset on. And he could tell exactly what I was doing because I would like stab at a fruit uh -huh. and then go... Oh, and like look at it on the end of the sword and stuff like that. And he knew exactly what was going on. It was the, it's it's kind of strange to talk about it because until you've put one of those on, though, it's really difficult to communicate to people what it's like. Yeah. There's not a good frame of reference for this for people who haven't tried the device themselves. There's been a lot of articles, actually, that are referencing that that may be the biggest hurdle that VR has to overcome is not having an accurate idea of what it really is like to wear it until you get one. Yeah, it's totally different. Like, mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing I've experienced like it. Like, being able to move around in a space that isn't real. Right. So, yeah. Someone on Twitter is mad at us. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. What's, that's new. Chris Mike Devis is saying that we're crazy. It's not a slow news week. Then he listed four stories, three of which are the same story, basically. Okay. Nice. So, um, I'll, I'll, well, I'll... Let's uh, cover I'll, it. I'll, I'll All right, quick, Devis. Latest news. Most of go. these were on my list of stuff to talk about. Yep. Right. Um, so he talked about Rise of the Tomb Raider having 300 plus microtransactions. I hadn't heard about that. No, actually, I have not heard about that that's either. A, that's a lot. We're Different calling costumes, man. Bullshit. Um, <laughs> Halo, the season best. He also talks about Halo 5 and its microtransactions. I haven't heard anything about Halo 5 microtransactions. No. Well, we talked Halo 5, we just had the achievement list as right, far as that we, just came yeah. out. Um, 
Then he talked about Battlefront having a $50 season pass, which I do want to talk a little more in depth about. And I do know that that I read about that. That was mm-hmm. on my list. Right. And uh, the Deus Ex revision that came out today, which was the fan created mod to update the graphics on Deus Ex. Right. So the yeah. original Deus Ex, I'm going to start there. Okay. The original Deus Ex came out in 2000. So it's a 15 year old game now. And there was a fan uh, mod to basically update the graphics, some of the textures, and add new areas to the game. The funny thing about that is, they made it go from a 15-year-old looking game to a 10-year-old looking game. Yeah. Because it's still like, okay, yeah, it's... There's only so much you can do. It's yeah. improved, but it still it's looks a like very old, I was a really old game. when that came out. <laughs> and uh, as part of Steam's stealth sale, another bit of news, um, it's I think it's on sale right now for like a buck forty nine. Oh, then... So yeah. it's like... If you, Steam sales, I hate them. <laughs> if you could make more money off that game at this point, more power to you. Right. Because that is so dated. It, it was, was It was a great game at the time. I remember it was. really loving it. And uh, for a buck forty nine, I mean, why not? We play on Game Club. We regularly play like ten and fifteen dollar games. I'm like, this game's not worth that. You know, yeah. Deus Ex at a buck forty nine. I got to look up and verify that it's actually a buck forty nine. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, like at a buck forty nine, you may as well just be playing the stupid game, especially now that they have the the update to make it look only ten years old. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at. I'm, the, I'm actually looking up the uh, the Halo Five microtransaction. So I guess it's it's tied into the requisition system. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Add pop-up, change <laughs> it where everything was on the screen. Uh, it says players will be able to earn rec packs in a number of different ways. First, they can level up, going one Spartan rank or completing commendations, goals set within multiplayer. So it sounds like it's very you can unlock them in a very similar fashion to, uh, like, uh, things you can get in Destiny where you could uh, get the... the Vanguard rewards and things like that. Right, or maybe Battlefield, like actually... battle packs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, Battlefield really had a very similar system. You're mm-hmm. exactly right. Uh, you get 40, 54 rec cards at start and 7,500 oh, RP. There's, there's some of the Deus Ex. <laughs> new uh, soundtrack. New soundtrack. Which we can't hear, but I mean... Yeah, that, it, but it's new. It, it's still... Actually, like, it still like, so, it's still, yeah. It's still like, like those the, the rocket contrails. Hey, there like, we go. Half-Life 1. <laughs> yeah, it's still... Yeah. It's still <laughs> and by the way, I was wrong. It's a buck thirty nine right oh. now. Oh damn! On Steam. So if you, I was right. You to too early. Time for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, the more I read this, the more it is. It sounds exactly like the microtransactions from Battlefield. Yeah, that's, you that's, it really nailed it with that. Comparison. Once you said it, I was like, oh yeah, Battle Pack. Like you can buy more mm-hmm. of them, but you get them by ranking up, or you can just play the game and get them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, it's more of the uh, don't spend money to win. It's just a access to stuff. Mm. Which, probably, I mean, like I'm sh- going to read more into this before I speak and you know, make a judgment call on it, but... What about the uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider? Rise of the Tomb Raider. Let's see if we find any Let me activate the super I mean, slow... Trans- Destiny just introduced those as well. It did. Have you yeah, looked through what the... So you, you get, just for playing the game, you get 400 of their silver, which is the in-game the, the currency. currency. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't looked at the emote prices. Have you looked at any of those yet? You can get... So they have two legendary emotes, and then the rest are Blue, rare. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get two of the blue ones for what they give you. So, okay. They're 200 each then. I so guess. 200 yeah. each. The uh, legendary ones I think are 500. Like the Charleston, I think was one. The you Charleston. Car- the Carlton. Carlton. The Carlton. Oh, the Car- yeah, the, it's not unusual. Yeah. Um, for 500. Yes. So I already spent money on that because the other. Really? Yeah. The other legendary one was a slow clap. Uh huh. And so I love doing that. Designates the difference between a legendary emote. And a rare emote. Probably more people want it. Like, they knew people <laughs> wanted the Carlton dance and the slow clap. So they were like, we're going to make this more expensive. And maybe length, too. I don't know, like, how long the, each animation is. Yeah, well, the the other one I got that's 200 is really long. You, like, drop to your knees and cry about someone that died. Oh, you can I've grieve seen that, yes. People. So now I just, now I do that. I'm every... so happy to see those come up in multiplayer. Yes, they do do that in PvP once you kill Absolutely, someone. Yeah, I mm-hmm. kill an enemy and then I, you know, what have I done? <laughs> and then you get shot while you're doing it. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's what I always love is just as, when they take teabagging actually out of the game and just make it legit something teabagging. Now you yeah. pay for it. Yeah. Like no, <laughs> it's the true. crouching yeah, wasn't enough. I really want to rub my nuts in your face. All right, let's let's make that a trade. So they added dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's nut, nut rubber. Oh. It's the, uh, <laughs> the the next legendary emote. It's probably. I would not be surprised. That's it's, an, it's coming. It's an exotic man. There's already taunt. I haven't seen what it looks like. Uh, I just keep seeing it on the screen. Taunt, you know, it might be a. Blow kiss, maybe? You think so? No, I've seen blow kiss. Oh. I've seen them do that. Oh, and I think Tom might just be like holding your arms out, like just saying, like, oh, bring it on, kind of thing. <laughs> I like that there's honestly, I think, 15 emotes, maybe a bit more. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot. Yeah, I'm trying to load it more, but, but our Wi Fi is fucking terrible. Oh, there it is. D- nope. <laughs> nope, you lost it. <laughs> no, screen's not moving. <laughs> 
How is it we still have bad internet I here? I want to break this <laughs> so bad, but it's not even the side fault. fault. <laughs> uh, okay, You're just so the it's, closest it's one to blame. Four ninety nine. You pay four dollars ninety nine cents for five hundred silver, mm -hmm. or nine dollars ninety nine cents for a thousand silver, and that comes with an extra hundred. Comes with an extra hundred silver, while a package of two thousand silver will cost nineteen ninety nine, and will come with a bonus of three hundred silver. So I guess it's like you get giving, an extra yeah. for like buying in volume. You get like a little bit of a break. You get a tiny that will go towards nothing because there's nothing mm -hmm. worth a hundred or so I've been I've been thinking about this um, I played a lot of destiny when it came out, but mm -hmm. I never picked up um, Any of the expansion I didn't get house of wolves. I didn't get dark below, you know, I haven't obviously haven't gotten Tang king I want to go back and <laughs> relaunch my destiny now since I have nothing after you know having left it for a year and and see what it's like um, It's a uh, I mean if you don't get the DLC It's just gonna be the exact same game that you left it with yeah you know, like, I don't think anything is going to be different. Um, yeah, you just won't have access to, there are several areas you just won't be able to go to. Um, which, to be fair, in most cases, it's the areas it's, you've already been to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just maybe backwards. Um, but yeah, there's no reason to pick it up if you got what you felt like a good experience. Well, well I, 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 if I, you got to a stopping point. I mm -hmm. want to check out Ten King Nux. Everyone keeps mm -hmm. talking about how great it is and how much fun they're having and I'm jealous I sat in the other day when you guys were filming mm -hmm. with it and it looked like a blast and yeah So that's kind of why I was like I wonder what the game looks like now like that like preserved in time uh, <laughs> Moment that I have well the uh, they've kind of relegated all the older quest lines And I don't know what it would be like if with your experience if you didn't have any of the DLC But or the expansions I guess is how they're referenced but so for people that have the Taken King, if you want to do like the original storylines, you have to go to like a little wall vendor and pick up abandoned quests. Right. And I think that's the only way to do it. That is actually something that's kind of weird about what they've done is there's no good way to re-experience the story. Hmm. Uh, at least Make a new character? I mean, well, you, you can, can do that, but everybody, most people already have three. It, well, not most people, but that there were achievements tied to leveling up one of each class. So I mean, you can replay any level, but... Since mm -hmm. there was such a lack of story in that initial yeah. game, you you don't really know which level came after what. They all kind of blend together. I guess you, you have know? a good point there. It's like the sequence. Who cares? You're not being told it's a story. Like, I remember but, I did something there. I found a yeah. dead dude here, and it's... I don't have time to tell you the order that these missions were in. <laughs> I will say, <laughs> and let me. I don't have time to tell you why I don't have time. To tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they at least have personality now. Like mm -hmm. it's all Nathan Fillion, but yeah, that's is. that's pretty much. And there's a lot of posts that story that you can do but it, it's again right goes back to right that usual grindy do a quest sort of hey but this time at the end of doing this quest you're going to get a really nice gun which is better that's good yeah and a lot of games thrive on that uh on, on, on scratching that itch of like finding loot and getting loot and <laughs> yeah you know if you get that formula right I and mean, you can run a game forever like world of warcraft <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah they're, they're still pumping raids out uh here let me read this thing uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of The Patch is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Stop shaving with an old razor, it's gross. Why are you torturing yourself with a gross old blade week after week? Probably because you don't want to shell out 20 bucks for a pack of new ones. DollarShaveClub.com has revolutionized the way men shave. With Dollar Shave Club, you can shave with a fresh blade as often as you want because they deliver a whole sleeve of amazing razors for just a few bucks a month. <laughs> the razors are so good, millions of guys have joined. Even the billion dollar razor corporations are freaking out. But instead of lowering their bloated prices, they're trying to fool you into milking the same blade for an entire month, and that is gross. Uh, they've price gouged just long enough. Never go back to squeezing weeks and weeks of shaves out of a disgusting, rusty blade. Join Dollar Shave Club, use a fresh blade whenever you want. It feels amazing, and it's a third of the price. Join the millions of others who figured out the smarter way to shave. Join Dollar Shave Club now by going to dollarshaveclub.com slash patch. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash patch. I believe my lovely assistant was trying to point at it, but it's over here. Nice. Yeah, good kitty. It's over there. <laughs> um, and well, I bet that. Then the other thing that uh, <laughs> they, they brought up that we want to talk about anyway was, the, you say they died? Yeah. Well, no, they just weren't charged. Like, it's out of batteries. Oh. Um, well, well, hold on. Before we, is it different from microtransactions? No, it, it, well, it, it's continuing, but not okay. Destiny. I was going to talk about Battlefront. Okay. Okay. Um, so it came out that Battlefront's going to have a $50 season pass. So to get the full Battlefront experience, $110. <sighs> Oof. Yeah, it's How kind many of DLCs? Really, really you say that, up when you think about that, I mean, right? DLC's been around forever. That's saying that you're not getting the full experience because you didn't get all the DLC. I mean, that's it's not like Battlefront's invented this idea. But that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but that's about what all season passes usually are running, like yeah, 35 to 50. Yeah, when I think of 50. how much DLC I spent, especially on getting, like, 
maybe Fallout 3 where I really enjoyed all the DLC. So that was five and each were 20. Yeah. So, I mean, I spent 160 on fall on, on that. But I'm I mean, so sorry. I guess you could... Hey, great, great game. <laughs> I guess you could, like... I guess spending it all at once. Do you save money at least? <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to you look up right now. You probably shave a little bit off. The real probably question like $10, is... Probably yeah. $10. I mean, the main thing is, is there substantive uh, additions to the game it's, with I, these? Buying the season pass saves you $10 than buying the DLC individually. Knew it. Yeah. <laughs> it's 10 bucks. Like, what do you get for that? Now, the, I hope the, they the are detailing early. includes four downloadable content packs and a self-referential emote called Shoot First. <laughs> All right. Though, what will be most difficult to resist for dedicated players is two-week advance access to each of the expansions. So I guess if you mm. buy the season pass, you also get the DLC two weeks before the people who buy it a la carte. Yeah, all right. I mean... You get two weeks okay. of practice, and so, then it's but like you get to play with shooting just fish people. on a barrel. Yeah, but you're practicing. Then in two weeks, you're just I, like... Getting I get all the people who don't know do maps. You, is there going to be? Is it just going to be new maps? Is it going to be new game modes? Is it going to be new weapons? Like, there's a lot that could be in a DLC that might make it worth... Uh, uh, basically another game price. Uh, it's hard for me to picture though with Battlefront because it's. I don't know. I mean, how? What did you think of Battlefront in, ge in general while playing it? I mean, <sighs> Walker Assault was was fun, but clearly broken. Yeah. I mean, there's it can be won by the rebels, but the rebels have to be on point, and the Empire has to be a little not. Yeah, we were the worst Empire I've ever seen. Yeah, we, we were we terrible. Won. Yeah, and we still won. Yeah. I mean, that was six players out of well, it's six out of twenty on the team. That's true. Uh, but that's a pretty good chunk of the population to be <laughs> running around horrible. screaming and getting slaughtered by Luke. Yeah. Um, so, eh, I mean, and the other game mode I was really not into. Drop Pod? Yeah. Just like... It was just so generic and kind of boring. And, hmm. um, I mean, it had all the, the air of Star Wars about it that was nice, but the game mode itself was really not that satisfying. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like... Battlefront 1 and 2 where it was conquest, you know, there's a yeah. bunch of capture points and you had to go from 1 to 1 and the tickets drop and stuff like that. It was just there here's one point, go here, all right, that point's gone, next capture point. Capture it, move it. It's just it was capture the it's king of the hill basically. I also felt like uh the weapons in that game, you die quick Real in quick. Battlefront. It takes two or three shots. Which is that. I mean that's pretty standard battlefield. Uh I mean True. pretty much every every one of those games you're fast dying Call of Duty is the same way. I mean that's not necessarily bad. It just feels it's rough when you're a new player coming into that. Yeah. And I really, if you look at the game mode screen, there was like 10 game modes there that were, I mean, two of them were the available, but the rest of them were locked. Uh, I hope that those are not like here. Okay. You get five of them and then DLC one will be two more. They, they uh, haven't outlined mm -hmm. all of the different game modes from what I can tell. Uh, they're expecting 10 different game modes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. They've uh, announced three of them that I see here. Droid Run, Hero Hunt, and Cargo. So Droid Run is uh, 6v6 competitive. Uh, your team works to secure a trio of droid locations. You have, but first you have to actually catch the droids. So I guess oh, interesting. interesting. Like they're running? I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, huh. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Uh, next one is Cargo, which is uh, their take on Capture the Flag. Tug of war style battle element to battlefront, run to an enemy's base, steal a valuable cargo, return it to your base. Capture the flag. Uh, but you don't need to have your own cargo in your own base to bring back the cargo you've taken from your enemy. So it's All like right. capture the flag without, you know, the flag needing to be there right. to capture, which is just normally an option to capture the flag. Uh, and then finally is hero hunt. So it's you and a team of six friends hunt down Darth Vader. Uh, you, one, player okay. one player spawns the hero or villain, and then the remaining seven spawn as normal. It's uh, like troopers, uh, assassination yeah. or VIP or I mean, there's a lot of yeah. Variants it's like same. juggernaut kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. What it sounds like yeah. So those they, are the they ones also they have. I know they have a mode that's just air vehicles. It looks like that. There was clearly one in the picture, but that's been one of the biggest complaints is there's not a space battle. So the I guess space it will battles be are great. atmospheric. Yeah. So the, fighting, not air in, vehicles, in, but non-air vehicles. It's right. vacuum vehicles. No vac vehicles. Well, they're still starfighters, but they just are not going to leave they're the They're just atmosphere. within the atmosphere, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, lately, that seems like that's every time they release a Star Wars game, your first iteration of the game, no one goes to the stars. It's just and wars. then they add in later space battles. They did that in uh, Knights of the Old Republic, right? Where that the, became space battle stuff that you could do later. Uh, in Galaxies, didn't they have the same thing where the space battles were a later edition? Yeah, I believe so. Edition? God, Galaxies was so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'd even classify that as one of the 
recent Star Wars games. Well, those are the only two examples I had of when they retconned in space battles. So they <laughs> had to work with what I had. With Galaxies, though, they retconned in the game. They did. Like, the game launched, and it was like, uh, there's really nothing to do. Uh, we'll fix that later. <laughs> I think, I, I feel like they, they put kind of a bad foot forward, though, by having that other smaller game type in the beta. Like, that would not have been the Probably, one that I think yeah. would have sold the game. It, it did make it feel like just a generic battle. Fi- it didn't feel like this Star Wars game that we've been yeah. waiting for. The Walker Assault definitely had that feeling at certain points with, like, the ATSTs walking around and stuff like that. Yeah, they should have picked a different mode. Or even just original Conquest or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that would have been much better. That would have made a much better feel for it. Uh, the I will say, though, that the sound design and the, the visuals oh. in the game are just gorgeous. Just hearing, like, the thermal imploders go off is just so visceral and, like, Jesus. Uh, it has that thud to it. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's great. It well, The beta was running at 60 frames per second, but I think it's 720 Res basically. Mm. So, uh, what you platform know. did you all play it on? Xbox, Xbox One, One, I assume. I tried yeah. it on the PC as well. It was real pretty on the PC. Yeah. Uh, at, yeah, I was running it at you know, 1440. Um, <laughs> I can brag about it. Yeah. Yeah. PC Master Race. <laughs> uh, 130 frames per second. It was the best time. Uh, I don't think it was getting that high, unfortunately. No, it, was, <laughs> it was not running that well. But, uh, I mean, it's pretty, but yeah, it was not. Not memorable that the escape pod mode or drop pod or whatever it was called. Well, yeah, apparently they had nine million players uh, play during the beta. It's the most for EA ever, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's that's a few. That's a lot. It's quite a bit of people playing. They could have had nine million one, but I didn't play. Actually, I, I didn't. I didn't want to. You spo- didn't pick it up at all. I didn't want to spoil the retail experience for myself. So you you had an option to try this game out and you decide gonna, you want to go in blind. I'm going to buy it anyway. So it's like I, I'm going to go in and just enjoy it. All right. Do, are you going to pre-order it? Uh, no. Because mm. I don't understand, like at this point, I, and I, I talk about this all the time, I don't understand pre-ordering anymore. Now that I can just download it straight to my console? Well, what they do now is instead of pre-order bonus, what you get is a, they'll, they'll offer like an exclusive deluxe version. And I think with this, in this case, what you get is like you'll get access to that ion, ion charge blaster, uh, uh, yeah. which is a, a kind of an anti-vehicle weapon. You get access to that. It's also a, like an extra 10 bucks. Um... <laughs> But yeah, they'll actually give you something that you can use in the game, mm. um, additional weapons. Meh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm in no rush. Yeah. They're, flying is still not good, by the way. Flying, oh it yeah, felt, it's, it's felt typical battlefield, yeah. like flying a jet, no one knows how to do it. Why do they default the, the flight controls to not inverted? Flying should be inverted. Yeah. Flying is should, inverted. Everything no, should that's, be inverted. You're, you're wrong about it. Everything. Everything. FPS. <laughs> it should all be inverted. No. Yes. No, you're insane yes. about that. No. But flying, flying is always inverted. Everything converted. The first video I ever did with you, Gus, was a Let's Play in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and you were just like, stop, stop the match, stop the match, <laughs> inverted. <laughs> it's, inverted. it's all wrong. Just, it's all wrong. Everyone's got to, every, yeah, inverted just makes the most sense to me. I, I wish that, I feel like they used to have that option, right? They did used to have that option on the 360 where you'd say on your profile that you wanted to play FPSs and have your controls inverted by default, but I feel like that doesn't happen anymore. Like, I have to go into the options and set it. Yeah, I don't remember an option for that on the one. I also wish that, similar to that, that they had an option where, by default, all games would turn subtitles on. Because I like yes. having subtitles on, because sometimes mm-hmm. I'm like, what the fuck did they say? And then you can just read it really quickly. Mm-hmm. That was actually one of the ni- features I really liked about the uh, Master Chief Collection, was they had the options to set universal controls across all the games. Mm. Uh, that was really handy, especially when you're jumping from title to title. It would be nice if they did that platform-wide. I- <laughs> It's a lot to ask for, though. I mean, yeah. that's a lot of backwards integration, especially f- now that titles are becoming more and more console agnostic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I imagine that's just extra dev time they don't want to put in to make it talk to specifically like, all right, Xbox One. Yeah, what do you got? Inverted? All right, sure. <laughs> Subtitles? Ah, all right. And we all know it's a pain in the ass to talk to an Xbox One. No one wants to do it. Yeah. yeah. That's a spot on impression of the I yell at it every night. <laughs> what do you want? Xbox, Halo? volume uh, down. Uh, no, not the one guy. Oh, God damn it. Stop listening. Stop I heard listening. That like three times yeah. during the raid the other day. <laughs> no, I love yelling at my Xbox. Like, sometimes I'll, uh, like, I, I watch TV through the Xbox and, mm-hmm. um, you know, like, I'll, I'll leave it on, I'll go to the kitchen and, like, make a drink or something. That like, if a, a TV show comes on that I hate, I'll be like, uh, uh, Xbox, watch ABC, you know, like, <laughs> like just switch a channel, just, I don't care to what. Like, Xbox, oh my God, no, not the Cleveland <laughs> show, no, <laughs> anything but that. Uh, so, that, like, I'll be screaming at it from the kitchen, <laughs> and then my dogs freak out, like, what's wrong? It's like, it's a Cleveland <laughs> show. <laughs> no one wants to watch, well, no one can watch it now, it's off the air, right? It's, it's like, it's, they it's show reruns. Rerun. Yeah. Yeah. It exists. 
Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, the other kind of new game that is sort of news this week is uh, Telltale. It's Minecraft story mode. Yeah. It, I mean, so... I, <laughs> wow, I, I, I was like... Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I made a, uh, uh, a comment. What was it? I made a, a promise to myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the patch, even that I'm Gus, not. I said I'm not playing any more of these fucking Telltale episodic games until the last one comes out. I'm sick of waiting two months between episodes. I don't because I forget everything. Yeah, so, and I think the final episode of Tales from the Borderlands is coming out next week. So at that point, I'll go back. I'm going to replay the whole thing. That way, I can have. And Game of Thrones just finished up, right? It did. Uh, uh, I think it's maybe I'll finish it. Maybe I'm, uh, I might be wrong, but that's one of those things where I quit playing after episode one. But I'm pretty sure I heard Jeff mention that. It was closing out. Yeah. I, I, so. Once they're done, I'll go back. And then once the final episode of Minecraft Story Mode comes out, I'll play that one as well. But I'm not doing this shit anymore. I'm done. Fuck it. He's done. Gus is done. He's out. I'm just... I'm so nervous about a Minecraft story. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just... Uh, well, maybe it's because I've watched so many, like, animations online in Minecraft. You know, like... I feel like everyone does. Stuff, like, yeah. everybody does Minecraft animations of, like, the characters moving around and stuff like that. And I feel like I'm... Well, this is a game. I feel like I'm going to be watching, like, you know, like... <laughs> it, I, you know, you're not far off. At times, it really does feel like that. Like, we, we've we started a Let's Play or Let's Watch, I guess, in it. Um, and uh, it looks so similar to those fan-made rendered... Minecrafts that you, you really get that impression very strongly yeah. right down to the the facial animation okay. and the so, so you've watched some of it I've watched well I, I was the one playing so had has telltale fixed their fucking engine uh, I mean it worked fine for that I mean how much does it have to load at that point but I've only, we're only about an hour in and I gotta say not a lot has happened in an hour okay a little bit I mean there's some story plot does it still story take, plot does it mm-hmm. still take forever to load no, it didn't take and, too long. Okay, mm-hmm. stuff pops in randomly. No, that didn't really have that either. I mean, it's still... Lines. I mean, it's slightly up res, but it's still Minecraft. No, but I mean, like, <laughs> all, the, all, all the Telltale games do that. I mean, they're not they necessarily do. super graphics intensive. They run on fucking iOS devices, and still it's like, oh, give us five minutes mm-hmm. to load a fucking game of The Wolf Among Us. I will say we, were, we played it on uh, Steam, because for whatever reason, by... Towards the end of the day yesterday, that still was not available on Xbox One. So we went ahead and went on to get started. So we, I got on Steam. I think for ep- the next part we record, I'm going to plug a controller in, though, because the WASD controls trying to walk around. Mm. And for, I mean, it's got some quick time type events where you just mash buttons. So far, it's been pretty much just like, oh, move one direction quickly or mash Q. Not comfortable mm. on a keyboard, yeah. really, because it's like, that's, um. this finger is not my good finger for mashing. <laughs> These good, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. It's it. That seems hard. The quick time events in those games, though, like mm-hmm. when, what I didn't like about those because I would just get into the story and I sometimes just put my controller down, like mm-hmm. not paying attention, just put it like off to the side, and then every now and again I'd be like, oh shit, like I've died uh-huh. like three times. That should be all from. the time. Uh, <laughs> like, oh cool, cutscene. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst. Um, so well, starting next week, that's another bit of news. Starting mm-hmm. next week, you'll be able to use the wireless Xbox One controller. Uh, that with I PCs. like. Yeah, that's with an awesome. adapter, right? Oh, is it with an adapter? Yeah, I think you have to have actually plug it in. Well, how else would it talk to it? Bluetooth? I mean, well, not every motherboard has Bluetooth built in. in fact, oh, sorry. That's not you you definitely have to plug I, it I in. I forgot about PCs, y'all. It's fucking stupid. What? The? <laughs> what? You just, does your Macs have Bluetooth, <laughs> Bluetooth on board? Yeah, all Macs do. Well, no one cares. How else are you going to talk to your great. phone? <laughs> uh, you got to plug an Xbox controller. Seems that wasn't common knowledge for a reason. The new adapter. Yep, you got an adapter. Diet Coke uh, and Judgment. Delicious. That's what you're facing over here. You can you can pre-order it. It looks like from Amazon right now. And how much is this adapter? Twenty five dollars. That's, That's cheaper than I thought. Honestly, um, I assume it doesn't come with a controller. But. No, no. Uh, it looks like it only works on Windows ten. Huh? Really? Ooh. Yeah. It says uh, yeah. It just says Windows ten PCs. Yep. It only looks like it. Yeah, that go wireless on Windows me. 10. Yep. Well, I think Xbox controllers are natively supported by Windows 10. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they w- may be in Windows 8, but they definitely weren't in Windows no, 7. Definitely not in 7. In fact, it crashes every time I plug. I mean, I get a driver that crashes every time I plug an Xbox controller into Windows 7. It still works fine, but it just crashes anyway. Cool. Don't know what that is. <laughs> cool. Great. Great news. <laughs> <laughs> it crashes, still works. Hey. Hey. Why not? Whatever that was, I didn't need, I guess. Um, here, I'm going to re- read this yeah. other one. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of The Patch is brought to you by MeUndies. We, hmm, okay. we all know how sexy confidence can be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that confidence comes from being comfortable. But how great can you feel if your underwear is wrinkling and riding up? 
MeUndies gets it, and that's why they've created the world's most comfortable underwear for a daily dose of confidence. <laughs> MeUndies is made from Mod Modal? Modal, I said it. I've been saying it wrong, apparently, for months. MeUndies is made from Modal. <laughs> they wrote it in here. Pronounced Modal. <laughs> like, like Dallas. <laughs> uh, a fabric that's twice as soft as cotton. That's twice as soft as whatever fabric you're wearing right now. MeUndies has tons of colors and styles. It's the only place to get matching pairs for men and women. They even release a new design every month. MeUndies even has a money-back guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, you get to keep it for free. You literally have nothing to lose. Plus, we all know that paying for shipping sucks, so MeUndies has removed that from the equation. All orders in the U.S. and Canada ship for free. And to sweeten the deal, MeUndies is offering you 20% off your first order at MeUndies.com slash The Patch. It's a special offer just for our listeners and viewers. Make sure you go to MeUndies.com slash The Patch, get 20% off your first order. They know we sent you. They've even got, like, these, these pant things. I have these. I, I actually have a pair of these, but in gray. I don't have this color. It's got a, a pocket in the back. Oh. They're really comfortable. And it's getting colder out now. Mm -hmm. So pick some of these up while you're there. 20% off. Whose are these? They're mine now. You can see how soft it is too. What? They're mine? Oh, shit. They're mine. Oh, those are really soft. Anyway. Man, so soft. Imagine that, all over gonna... your, imagine that all over your dick. <laughs> Didn't know where that was going. I won't have to soon. It's the thing! That's it's MeUndies.com <laughs> slash the <laughs> It's soft. It feels good. It does. Uh, <laughs> another bit That of, should be their new slogan. <laughs> imagine this on your dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, another bit of news that came out today. Probably the, uh, the worst, I, I don't know, the worst. Mm. Um, the dumbest piece of news. Oh, okay. Was, uh, oh, this is going. Oh, yep. Okay. Uh, VG247. <laughs> Dot com, which is a video game news site, apparently, went to TGS, and while at TGS, they thought they had a hands-on with Uncharted 4, but they were actually playing Uncharted 2, the remastered version of Uncharted 2, and they reported on it as if it was Uncharted 4 and wrote an article on their website, and then had to write a retraction explaining <laughs> that they were wrong. I love it. And then their, their, their negative criticism was that it was like, it's so formulaic. Yeah, and it's it, like, it, yeah. feels, <laughs> it feels familiar and repetitive. It's, it's like, you like played a... this already. <laughs> <laughs> the guy even says, like, oh, well, an uncharted veteran like me knew exactly what to do. It's like, yeah, because you already played the fucking game. And that being said, I mean, I will give him just a tiny bit of, of I, no, I haven't played Uncharted. I hear that that is basically one of the most iconic scenes in my opinion of the uncharted series he, so he played from what i understand mm -hmm. the beginning of uncharted 2 which starts uh with a like a train sequence kind of like a train crash mm -hmm. which i think is one of the moments that stands out the most to me mm -hmm. for any of the game any of the uncharted games yes so i'm agreeing with you so <laughs> visual upgrades can make a huge difference in how a game looks especially if they took it a pretty good ways i mean so i have i Played a few things that have been upraised where like, oh, wow, this is a totally different experience. While he's talking, if the control room, if you could pull up some Uncharted 2, like the remastered footage, just so we can, mm -hmm. so, so, so you can see. Uh -huh. And you can see what they saw. How not and you tell me is. if this looks like a PS4 <laughs> flagship AAA title. <laughs> Was it, is it not that good? I well, I've been shocked going back uh -huh. and looking at it. It's like, I, I loved those games. I'm a huge fan of the Uncharted series. Uh, at the time on the PS3, mm -hmm. I thought it was like jaw dropping, and now it's like, oh, it's like a cute cartoon kind of. Well, this is a yeah. PS4 remaster, though, right? Right. Okay. But I mean, so that's what the article. That's what he wrote in the article too, wasn't it? That it was like negative because he was like, oh, this doesn't look like a. Right. Yeah, because, which which the article like is gone now. They, all that's up is a retraction from the editor. The, someone, yeah. someone copied and pasted it in like the yeah. Gamespot <laughs> forum, so you can still read it if you want. <laughs> uh, so is this it? Okay. Yep. I mean, I mean, it looks that's good. Not bad. No, that's but <laughs> I just I love that he's like, yeah, you know, just feels like I've done it before. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel like we've been here, done that. Uh, I mean, so yeah, I mean, uh, they did a great job remastering. I don't want to sound mm -hmm. like I'm shitting on it, right? But it just does not look like what you would expect from a title developed exclusively for, like, to be a flagship title on the PS4. It's obviously an older generation title that's been polished up. Yeah. <laughs> But, that, that was my favorite story when you said but the, that. But the, like, the worst part is, so, okay, so it's like, whatever, the guy made a mistake, he posted a retraction, and then on his, like, personal Twitter account, he, like, this morning he wrote something like, you guys, and people are like, replying like, oh, rough day, long day, you know, they, everyone knew <laughs> yeah. about this. And then he replied to one of the, one of the people who wrote him, was like, you know, honestly, I couldn't care less. I was like, what kind of dickhead thing is that to say? Look, I realized okay. that on this podcast, many times, I have come across... And been completely ignorant of the subject matter. That is the basis for this podcast. But I don't call myself a journalist either, so... Yeah. so whatever, not a big deal. So they never told him what he was, that was playing? Like, he said that 
all the signs were in Japanese and he was confused. Okay. okay. Well, he was at Tokyo Game Show. Right. All right. Grain of salt. <laughs> so he was confused, but it he still wound. went home. He's like, <laughs> yeah. God damn it. <laughs> and no uh, one actually spoke to him. I'm sure they just used hand signals to. <laughs> They're like, they're like, well, here, controller. <laughs> <laughs> that's Japanese for two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So that's 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 awful. I can't I can't believe that. I would if like if I made that mistake on the patch, I probably wouldn't be on the patch. Like I would just leave. Like out of my own shame, I would just like hide. What are you about? We've made mistakes. I'm sure of that as bad on the patch. I wouldn't call myself the veteran of something or like yeah. to, that's true. to be an expert about something and then be that off base about Claiming it. Claiming to be an expert is where you really make the mistake. Right. I I, I I I'm not an expert about anything other than paying backing Star Citizen. That's the only thing I'm an expert at. Yeah, how many times have you done that so far? I think I've only done it like two or three times. Which amounts to... Do, what, uh, did we at one point say we should make a graphic for the running total of how much Gus has invested? And then I, I, I think I, Ashley and I tried to talk you into doing more because you, you were afraid a ship was going to go away. You did. <laughs> I bought it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Is Ashley over there? No, oh. she's not there. It was the, 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 that Starliner. Yeah, I bought it. Um, yeah, I loaded it up. I, now I, was, I, I made a guilty confession to Ryan earlier. Okay. <laughs> I'm really embarrassed by this. <laughs> I don't know why you're so embarrassed by this, by the way. It, it, it's super embarrassing. It's I, not. I have not I'll been... I'll be the judge of this. Okay. <laughs> so I've backed Star Citizen up for a ridiculous amount of money. Right. I can't run it on my PC at home. <laughs> it's just, like, anytime I try to launch it on my PC at home, it says the cache files are corrupt, and it redownloads the game and tries to reinstall it. Then I launch it, it says the cache files are corrupt, so it redownloads the game so and you, reinstalls you, it. You just Play got a bug. It here? Or yeah, so I just installed it today yeah. <laughs> on one of the machines back here so I could play it. I mean, it's a, it's a, pro, it's a, pro, a bug. It it's happens. not out yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix that. I found I mean, other people who had posted that they had the yeah. same problem, and I went through their troubleshooting steps, and it didn't fix it, so whatever. Have you tried <laughs> disabling SLI? Because I know you're running it I did it. try that. Okay. Yeah, still didn't work. So it's, it's even before that. It's like in the process of the launcher when it verifies the game files. That, that laptop has an SSD in it, doesn't it? Yes. Hmm. I wonder if there's something involved there. I'm not going to troubleshoot this live on the podcast, but yeah, uh, I, I, I don't think it's embarrassing. It's not your fault that that's Well, I've already right. deleted it all. Like, I, I tried yeah. getting rid of all the files, redoing it. I'm sure it's something in the registry. Like, I'd already had another previous problem where I had to restore that machine. So I'm mm -hmm. sure, and it was after that that it stopped working. So I'm sure there was something uh -huh. in my machine restoration that fucked up that's causing this problem now. But whatever. And which module is it that you're playing? Uh, so I've got, I mean, all that's out is Hangar and uh, Arena Commander. Right. So, so it's Arena Commander or... I mean, it's just launching it and anything. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to get into the hangar module before you go to Arena gotcha. Commander. Gotcha, okay. So, yeah, I mean, even just launching the game is where... I, I get to the login screen, and that's about it. I, I, it's, I feel like I, I should back it, and the, at the same time, it's like, well, why don't I just wait? And it's like, they don't need my money at this point. So... They've they already had, got Gold, Gary Oldman attached. They like. had Citizen Con. <laughs> <laughs> they had tons of information come out in this past week. This is probably what we should have been focusing on this whole fucking podcast. Now that I think about citizen. it. <laughs> they, so Chris Roberts announced how big the game is that they're going to ship, the size of the scope, the world. Yeah, four hundred quadrillion cubic kilometers. God damn. Ryan's skeptic. He doesn't like it. Is no, it, I mean, it's, it's a okay. million kilometers by a million kilometers by 400 kilometers. We're also talking about space here. There's a lot of nothing in space. Yes, yeah, true. I but mean, you if you got a warp drive, if, if you want to see that nothing, you can do it. Yeah, I mean, who wants to see the nothing? I mean, you, you one time, you're like, ah, I'm going to take a little space vacation. And you if drive out in the middle of nothing. If you're like carrying, if you're like smuggling, you're yeah. carrying valuable cargo, you want to see nothing. You still want to use an FTL drive, though, right? You Maybe. don't want to just, like, cruise through space. I know you, you've occasionally played, like, flight sims where you'll mm -hmm. fly from, like, Dallas to Kentucky or something. But Kentucky? I don't know. I just picked a place. <laughs> what? I wouldn't What's dirty wrong my with plane Kentucky? With it. <laughs> it's a waste of fuel. You down on where the colonel's from? Come on. <laughs> uh, let's say, uh, yeah, I'll fly from Austin. I'll fly from Austin to L.A. or wherever. Places uh -huh. I go. Not Kentucky. And you do that in real time, right? Yeah. Why not? Why? Well, I, I think mean, it would be a better question. But. It's like, well, I feel like flying to L.A., but I don't really want to go to L.A. i got three and a half hours to kill. Are you upset when you have to take a real flight from Austin to L.A.? What do you mean? Do you find that boring? Um, no. Have you ever, oh, have I never told you? No. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'll take my laptop and I'll fly the route on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll, I'll, before I leave home, I'll fly up to like 10,000 feet or so. And then like 
close it. Then when I get on the plane, <laughs> then you're gonna open up your laptop again at 10,000 feet, and I'll reopen it, and I'll get my joystick out, I'll take my joystick. Someone next to you is gonna think you're remote controlling the plane. They'll be like, I'll be like, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Yeah, they're gonna be like, you know, uh, I gotta get up and go to the bathroom. Like, Can you just hold this? Have you you've seen the Google self-driving cars, right? It's the same thing. You know, we're just, we're, I'm just, uh, I'm backseat driving. Back yeah, that's yeah, no, good. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> Every now and again, Lino are like. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's a huge space, but I, it, it, I don't care how big the, the container is. I'm curious what's in it. Mm. Well, apparently, Gary Oldman, Gillian Anderson, yeah. Mark Strong, Mark Hamill, uh, John Reese davies and Andy Serkis are in it. That's a pretty solid lineup. That's not, that's, so what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six people for 400 quadrillion cubic kilometers. And you got two Wing Commander uh, oh, alumni. Yeah. yeah. John Reese davies and Mark Hamill were both in Wing Commander. Mm-hmm. John Reese davies should not have been in Wing Commander. I gotta be honest. He, I think he played Paladin, which is supposed to be like a Scottish guy. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. He had that accent. Yeah, I remember that. was that. not good. That was fine. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about oh. it. They showed off some gameplay and Did some Did that prepare some him for his later role as a dwarf? Uh, Maybe that's where he got the accent straightened out. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Took him a while. Think about it. Maybe if he hadn't been in Wing Commander, he, we might have had a different Gimli. Hmm. Maybe it would have been someone that was not the tallest person on the entire cast. <laughs> yeah, but they shrank him. Yeah. <laughs> it's all like forced perspective. How, I, how mad tall. would you be as the director of photography and be like, really? Why him? <laughs> but it was believable. It was good. No, no, they did great. Yeah. I'm not saying they did a bad job of it. I just think that's probably the worst person you could have cast. They, they were already having physically. they were already having to deal with this with a lot of people. Yeah, I'm sure it's just like one more person Gandalf doesn't matter. Huge and everything. You know. Yeah. Some of that stuff's crazy like the forced perspective wagons that they use mm -hmm. to make people look like they're sitting next to each other but it's like they're not. Yeah. So, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, and Sean Astin's like actually the size of Thumbelina, so that was a whole thing. <laughs> to make him bigger. Uh, Citizen Con, what else was there? The Squadron 42 cast. So, I mean, I, like, I saw the list of people that they cast in Star Citizen. It's like, oh, that's what they're starting to spend money on. Like, now you're starting to see some of the, some of the results. And I thought the, the demonstration that they put out, they put, like, a 20-minute demonstration out uh, for the game. I thought that looked really good. My phone's ringing now. I've always been real impressed with the stuff they release. It's just I, they don't have really a timetable where I can start getting excited about maybe someday I'll play this game. Yeah. Other than... Probably before I die. How long has it been in development now? Like three years at this point, I think. Uh, well, I mean, and that's for a game dev to start at zero and go to a finished product. That's still a pretty short amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, it's a space sim, so there's, there is actually... Well, I can't, I'm waffling because it's like there's a lot of physics that, that go into what they've done. Like the, the reactive damage on the actual ships and the being able to have more than one person in a ship and just the whole... Uh, engine of the game is pretty robust, but still, again, when you're talking about space, there's only so much there. A lot of it is very pretty. Cubic kilometers. A lot of it is very pretty skyboxes. Mm -hmm. I don't. Is there's no? Well, there was a whole marine idea where you could like actually do the kind of the FPS module, but right. I don't. There's that, not a lot of planet interaction, right? Uh, planet interaction. I, uh, I think so. I, or like, I'm sure that was one of the stretch goals, but it's not like No Man's. No Man's Sky. Sky where That's you again, I was, I was sitting here trying to think of the name of that yeah. game. But I Which also doesn't interject. have a release date. Also doesn't have a release date. Uh, but yeah, I think they showed up. And again, they said that that FPS module, the Star Marines, is coming soon. Mm -hmm. After they delayed it. And um, yeah. they've already been saying, they, they've been saying it was coming soon for a while. Like, right before Gamescom, they were like, it's going to be really soon. Like, kind of like, wink, wink at Gamescom. And it's still not out. Soon is, you know... Totally up for interpretation. I mean, in the span of three years, like one more year, and soon. It's weird watching from the outside as like someone's credibility starts to yeah. slip. <laughs> like it's like, uh, okay, so Chris Roberts came in, and he had this, you know, this name, and everybody's like, ah, oh, we'll throw money at that, and Wing Commander, blah blah blah. And it's, you start missing deliverables, and all of a sudden, people's faith goes from like, oh no, it's it's Chris Roberts. He'll come through too. All right, man. What, uh, you gonna Molyneux me here? What's going on? <laughs> Don't Molyneux me like that. <laughs> uh, yep, up, up, up. I'm trying to see if there's any other big news that we saw. I guess with God. FPS, that's, again, well, at least they were smart enough to kind of module it off, but, uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure why they wouldn't release it in stages more so than they already have. Like, they've got the Arena Commander and they got the, the Hangar, but, you know, give me something kind of more like Free Space. 
and then add in more of the FBS stuff. Maybe this is all that they've done so far. <laughs> oh, don't. yeah, maybe everything <laughs> it's else. Like the rumors you hear about the division were like, oh yeah, oh, they, they had have, a great demo, but that's all that exists. Yeah, no one's actually working <laughs> on it yet. <laughs> that's not even. I've heard that that game is not even close to like what it looked like at E3. Like it's not the same oh, the game division? as what they were talking about. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen like, it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I mean, when I say E3, I mean like the old old E3 yeah. when they first showed it. I mean, the, the, they, they so did much the optimization that goes into that, huh? Didn't they do an updated demo this past E3? Did they? Yeah, I think they did. Yeah, yeah. and it was like it didn't seem anything like that first demo. They so showed. the one from this E3, well, that was the one where they had the two squads, right? And they like. Uh, Decide whether to betray your friends there at the end. Uh, you have to that, collect all the resources. That so. was they. I mean, they did that in both. In the first mm -hmm. one, they that's how they kind of revealed. At the very end, they did it to reveal like the open world PvP aspect. Right. In this one, they did a thing where, yeah, they come across another squad, right. and then they fight, and then like the one person betrays his own squad. Yeah. Yeah. To take all the resources. Yeah. I mean, it looks great, but that was a, that, that was the same E3 that we first saw Watch Dogs. Oh we first God. saw the division. Was it? Yeah. No. That was, I that, think that was, it was no. I think that was, that was the, the same one. The Watch Dogs was before. I, I, I gotta look, look that up. up. I think I'm, that I'm was fucking looking that shit it, up. It'd be tight. I mean, but again, it would have been one of those things where Watch Dogs was like coming next week, and the division's like coming sometime in a couple years. Watch uh, Watch Dogs first E3. I can't believe. <laughs> uh, that was 2012. Yeah, 2012. Okay. So let's see uh, the division first E3. I want to be right. 2015. Fuck you. That's not, <laughs> that is not correct. Uh, Vision was first revealed at E3 2013. Damn it! Boom! Ah. It could have been a release for Watch Dogs. You said, you said first E3 for Watch Dogs. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's what I meant. Like, yeah. I thought the two trailers lined oh, up. Oh, they're, they're revealed. Because I thought both. I remember talking about both of those things, like, oh, these both look great, and then... No, it was, that's it was, why I, I just... I'm waiting on the division. I'm so yeah, nervous. I mean, that's one of those games where they announced it and they showed it. It was like, this is like everything I want in a video game. Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't feel really disappointed by this most recent E3. Like you said, it looked different. I thought it still felt... Relatively the same and it looked mm -hmm. like it still looks like it still looks a game. Good. I want to yeah. play it's still incorporating a lot of stuff that I really like so I'm st I'm I mean, st it I'm might be excited. awesome. Yeah, that's it might be I <laughs> well, we'll I'm so nervous about games. Something. I don't want to get a hype for games like, like I was it's soon It's like in February or March. I think is uh when it's finally coming out is it though I, again I still feel like February is like the generic uh next year February say I'm pretty sure that they've, they've officially said that like they've, they've 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 declared a date the division release date March eighth, twenty sixteen. Oh, it's got an official like day. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah, they, it, they, they announced it, it <laughs> in June. So they must have announced it like right at E three. Right at E three. Yeah, yeah. At E three, they announced March eighth, twenty sixteen. Does it though? Yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> March eighth, twenty sixteen. Sure, anybody so, can say a date. I'm gonna say it's gonna come out on March seventh. We'll see which one of us is more wrong. <laughs> well, it would be, if it's delayed, it would be you because you're back in time. I know. I'm just saying that they're both nonsense days. It'll be March 8th. No. It's coming out. I, I'm going to say right now, I bet it doesn't come out on March 8th. Mm. Yeah? You oh, go, it's you coming out March 8th. It. It. It's, 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 it's already been delayed. So? That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Release dates mean nothing. All that means is they have a track record of failure. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. They have a track record of trying to avoid failure. I think not give, shipping your game is kind of failing, right? No, no, no. It's wanting to make sure that you polish it and get it right. All right. No, I mean, I do respect that. <laughs> yeah. But that does not necessarily mean that. Mm. Didn't Arkham Knight's Day get pushed back and then it came out for PC and didn't work? Well, it came out for PC super broken, yeah. Yeah. And that I think that was after a pushback release date. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. There's not Release dates are just a day. You can't save <laughs> a bad QA team. Hey, come on. What? S speaking of release dates. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we only got like five minutes left, so I want to get through a few more like things. Gus has got like a dog in this game. He's like, oh no, I'm heavily invested in the yeah, division. The division, I've paid hundreds of dollars for it. No way, that starts it. Yeah. Um, Overwatch beta yes. got announced. October 27th is when they're going to officially start rolling out the beta. Really super excited about that game. Have you played that? In, in I have any not played any okay. Overwatch at all. I've seen it at a couple of events mm -hmm. and seen people playing it. It looks really cool. Uh, can't wait to get my hands on it. And that's uh, that's a third person shooter kind of uh, class based. Yes. Right. Oh, speaking of third person shooter kind of class based, uh, what was that Bethesda game? Battle Cry. Battle Cry. Yeah, that's it. It's rumored that that game's been possibly shuttered. Have really? You, have you heard oh. those rumors? Seriously? Yeah. I, 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 where was it? I read that rumor Didn't last they week. Release I think beta codes for that at their panel. I, I think that the beta hasn't launched. I think they released a bunch oh. of codes. Ooh. And they're uh, that's rough. And the beta's still not out, so let me look up. Well, let me let me put it this way: when I type "Battle Cry," one of the uh, autocompletes on Google is canceled. Ooh. 
<laughs> that's not a good, but it is Google. Well, so that everyone, as soon as the beta doesn't la launch, that's the first thing they're going to check is, is yeah, it canceled? Yeah, canceled. So uh, that's not that unusual that that's up there on the search priority. No, let's um, see. Did it have three question marks after it? Yeah. <laughs> I do not see anything else about if it. If there was an exclamation oh, wait, point and then a question, then that might be like, oh. Oh, man. But if it's just like, huh? <laughs> very See, different. It is very different. Yeah. yeah. Punctuation makes the meaning. There's that one that's a question mark and an exclamation mark. Yes. Together. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So, uh, apparently. And put it at the beginning, it's Spanish. <laughs> apparently, on September 10th, they quiet, Battlecry Studios quietly laid off an unnamed number of staff with one source saying it was a substantial portion of the team in Austin. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Maybe they were done. Maybe uh, the game's good. All finished. And I think I, I had heard. Another yeah, rumor. Again, th these, these are all rumors. I, I'd seen yeah. another rumor posted online. Allegedly. That Bethesda was concerned about the reception the game had been receiving compared to its other titles. Uh, well, that's a lot to live up to, Bethesda titles. Yeah, but you think about it. Someone else pointed out, like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's no brink. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, think about how many times they pulled back uh, StarCraft Ghost. I mean, not they, but like Blizzard did with StarCraft Ghost, where they kept showing it and they're not happy and they don't like this one and they don't like that. It's not a bad decision to pull something if you don't feel like it's going to represent your brand well. You know, Especially I, when you're like Bethesda. I yeah. played um, Ghost. You uh, probably played more than one version of it. I mean, there was uh, several iterations of it, right? Uh, I, I, don't, I only played one version. Mm -hmm. It was on the uh, on the original Xbox when uh, at the first BlizzCon. I can't find any more information about Battlecry. I know I read a rumor about it, but well find it. I'll put it in the patch notes. Why would you sit on that announcement, though, if you were going to cancel the game? I, maybe they're just trying to retool it. Just go back to the drawing board with it? Yeah. They don't want to say it's gone. They just you know, rework it No one something. wants to admit failure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. unless they totally think it's just a wash. <laughs> like The VP was like, I played it. it sucks. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> we're done. Oh, 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 of course. i got to talk about this. I'm sorry. All right, what is it? Do you, do you play any Hearthstone? No, but Do I we know have what you're drink? talking about because no, I, I'm not I drinking watched anymore. the video you sent me uh, about this. Yeah, so apparently <laughs> the, the party's over if you play a Grim Patron deck in Hearthstone. They're attempting, Blizzard's attempting to fix what they perceive as a overpowered uh, build, overpowered deck build. They're now, do you deck. have one of these builds? I have a Grim Patron deck, yes. Do you use it a lot? Yes, Be because it's, it's an e if you play it right, it's an easy way to win. And uh, there's very little defense. The only way to beat a Grim Patron deck, in my in my experience, is to very quickly knock out your opponent before they can get going. Um, so it's a card, basically. The Grim Patron's a card that, if that card takes damage, it spawns a copy of itself. Ooh. Uh, so it's like you can build a warrior deck where you play one, and there's another card that'll give all your cards charge. You do like a AoE that hurts all your cards. Then you do another one, and soon you just fill your side with this and they could all attack instantly. And yeah, then there was another card that made them all attack when they spawn. Right. Some, yeah. So it's... in order to get around this, they're nerfing that card, the Warsong Commander. That gives all of your cards charge, so they're going to get rid of that. And instead, I think, give all of your cards plus one attack or some stupid shit. Yeah, so, uh, but so the Grim Patron will still exist, it still work, but the ability to give it charge quickly uh, and overwhelm your enemy, it will, it will be a little harder now. It'll be less like playing the Empire in Battlefront. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So uh, I thought that was I thought that's a, that's a pretty big move uh, on Blizzard's part to try to nerf the uh, the Grim Patron build. I so. mean, if it's commonly accepted that that's a problem, then it seems like a good idea. Like if you see that come up as your opponent, you're like, well, fuck, I might as well quit. Then yeah, that needs to change. That's not good. Nobody wants to play that game. Yeah, unless unless you're the person playing that deck, <laughs> and then you want it to continue as long as possible. I like how nerfing things is like. Something that's big in gaming now. Like, I feel like it happens all the time in, like, multiplayer games. I'm really curious how nerf became the term for that. Because you turned into, like, a nerf dart. Yeah, they made it not hurt anymore. Yeah. Oh. Which is a, which is not true. Have you ever no. hit by a nerf rocket launcher? Those things don't mess the around. The big red ones, too. Then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we got a couple nerf guns in here. I would not want to be at the business yeah, end Yeah, I of. bought that bow for Kyle. <laughs> the big, <laughs> giant one. Um, then probably the last thing I want to bring up uh, is... Humble Bundle announced job cuts. In other news, Humble Bundle has a staff. That's a company? Yes. They had to lay off 20% of their employees. So a, a, a guy. Was 12 it, people. Was it wow, the, really? Was it the Humble team or the Bundle team? <laughs> In charge of what Humbling we, or yeah, Bundling? Who got left? 
apparently they uh, they said their expansion was uh, what, was, what was the word used? Too ambitious. So they had to lay off 12 people. <laughs> I mean, Humble Bundles sell like crazy, right? I guess they just aren't getting enough of the commission off of it, or? I guess I said, so the uh, co-founder, John Graham, said, uh, and this is his quote, Unfortunately, last week, Humble Bundle was forced to let go of some of our employees. Despite strong revenue and our community surpassing $65 million raised for charity to date, our past hiring was too ambitious, and we had to make a hard call last week. So... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're, uh, I guess so they had 60 people employed. Yeah, they're based out of San Francisco, California, and they've got a game subscription service, which they recently launched that costs $12 a month. So maybe the subscription service isn't taking off. And this, and honestly, this is the first time I heard about the subscription service. That's a weird choice, too, because game subscription services aren't usually that good. Uh, I mean, it's... you really have to work hard to make a good product, and then even then, it's... It needs to be addicting. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I assume game subscription, they're like rental, basically, right? Okay. I get what, like a Netflix kind of? Not Netflix. I don't know. I mean, I mean as, as Gus said, I feel like this was not at all marketed. So apparently it's not out yet. Okay. It, it's coming out next month in November. Uh, it's rolling it out. It delivers a surprise Steam for Windows game to members once a month. I mean... It supplies a game once a month? Yeah. You just get a surprise game. You get a game. surprise game in Steam. Oh, so you don't even know what it is? Yeah. Oh. Do you get to keep it, I wonder? I would assume so if it's in Steam, you can't... I mean, there's a lot of stuff in Steam that's like, Oh, yay. <laughs> that best description I've seen. So it says, Subscribers can expect each month's featured titles, or each month's featured titles to not only be on par with the type of premium content that Humble Bundle is known for, but with even more added value. All right. Yep. So apparently, uh, and I guess if you sign up before they launch, before November 6th, you get... Grimrock 2 as a bonus for signing up for the service early. I'm sorry, the Legend of Grimrock 2. I mean, the way you read it there, it made it sound like you get a bundle in right. that month. Yeah, yeah it does than... multiple titles. Yeah, that's why I reread mm -hmm. it, like, yeah, to see if it was titles. Because it, Humble Bundles are a lot of indie games usually, right? Right. And like, mm -hmm. I don't know if any one of the games that come from that would last me a month. Yeah. Humble Bundle says the games included in the service will be a, quote, Variety of specially curated games automatically delivered to them digitally each and every month whose identity will remain hidden until the time of delivery. Right. That sounds good. I like that. Seems like an interesting idea. I think it depends on what the pricing is. 12 bucks a month. Yeah. One for each employee that got laid off. Yeah. <laughs> that was too soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got to go. So we're out of time. So thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, stay tuned for, for Game for Club. Game Club. Uh, it's, a, it's a game that's dear to my heart. It's the vanishing of Ethan Carter. Bye. <laughs>